Hey there everybody! Today I'm going to be showing you how to make these beautiful giant paper flower succulents. And I have three different style petals and I'm going to be showing you variations throughout this video. The supplies I use for this project are 65 pound cardstock. I also use some pan pastels or distress ink and sponges on the edges but this is totally optional. I use a wood dowel to curl my petals, a glue gun, scissors, and or a cutting machine. You can hand cut or you can use a cutting machine but you'll still need a pair of scissors on hand. And you'll also need the templates, of course, which if you have not yet purchased them, they can be found below in the video description. No matter which size petal shape you choose to work with, if you're gonna start and make an extra large flower, then you're gonna need to cut out the following number of petals, which is six extra large petals. You'll need six large, six medium, six small, six extra small, and up to four center pieces and one corresponding base. Each base is labeled, whether it is an extra large, large, medium, small, or extra small base. And I'm gonna show you how to downsize the flowers easily using the templates you already have. You don't have to have additional templates. They're just an easy way to downsize, and I'm gonna show you that with the different variations in this video. So like I said, to downsize, all you're gonna do is subtract the use of the extra large petal to downsize to a large, or to subtract the use of the extra large and large petal to downsize to a medium to create an overall smaller flower. If you should find that you need the cutting machine measurements, they can be found written below in the video description. Um, the file should upload okay for you, but if they don't for any reason, then go ahead and just plug in those dimensions real quick in the bottom and you'll be all set and it'll make sure that your flower turns out perfect. Okay, so I have all my petals prepped here. I have my center and I have all five petal sizes plus my base. And before I start building the flower, I am going to actually add some detail to the petals by shading them with what is called a pan pastel. You can also use Distress Ink. This is totally optional. This just adds a little extra pop. You can still um, make these no matter if you do this or not. So like I said, pan pastel or you can use some Distress Ink. Um, these can be found at craft stores or online. I'm going to link this below the video in the blog post that goes with this video. And when I do this, I just grab one of my little ink sponges and I just focus on the very tips of the petals here. So I go around and I just sort of swipe gently along the tip to create that little bit of a um, distressed faded look to the petal. When the flower all comes together, as you can see by my other flowers sitting around me here, um, it looks really pretty. So just something very simple like that. It doesn't have to be exact or perfect. Just try to be fairly consistent with the width of your stroke when you're um, adding the pan pastels or the distress ink to your petals. I'm gonna do this with all of my petals, the extra large, large, medium, small, extra small and the center petals. You don't need to do this with the base because of course we won't see it. Um, so just go around and do that for all of this and then we'll prep the petals before we start to build. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a one and a half to two inch slit at the bottom center of our giant petals. And then we're going to gently crease right down the center. Just fold the petal over in half and gently crease right down the center. I'm gonna use my glue gun here to add a little bit of glue to one side of that slit that I cut. And I'm going to um, just slightly overlap there. You don't wanna overlap too deep, just about halfway of an overlap. You're gonna repeat this with all of the petals. The smallest petal that I'm showing you there, um, you can go a little bit less on the slit, maybe only like one inch or so. So that's how you prep all of the petals there. Once you've finished prepping all of your petals, then we're gonna start adding them to the six-sided base that is included with your templates. So what we do here is we start with the extra large petal first. If you're making an extra large flower, you're gonna start with the extra large petal. If you're making a smaller one, you would start with a large or the medium petal. And I'm gonna go into details about this um, as we move through the video. And I add some glue to the back of one petal and I place it on one side of the hexagonal base. The sides just help us um, place our petals in a way that helps, us helps the flower turn out in an even fashion. So especially if you're a beginner to paper flowers, um, these bases are, are really helpful to help uh, get you to have your petals very um, straight and in a nice pattern formation. 
am just adding one petal per side. So um, I have six of each size here, and I'm starting with the extra large, and I'm adding one petal per side here. Like I said a minute ago, if you want to downsize, then you would just start with the large petal, or you would start with the medium petal if you want a medium flower. The other flowers you're seeing around me here, that's exactly what I did, and I'm gonna show you that with the other um, styles of succulents in this video so you can kind of get a better visual and an idea of what I mean by that. So these templates are really versatile um, to make different sizes. I'm adding in that very last petal there, so that hexagonal base, and I'm kind of tucking the one side underneath the first side that I started with there. So it has sort of a nice finished look. So we've added all six of our extra large petals to the base. We're moving on to the large petals now, working progressively from larger to smaller in the petal size. When you place your large petals in, try and aim to have the large petal point going in between the two extra large that is below it. This just helps the flower look like it's blooming and it adds a little bit of a nicer pattern look to the flower when you're looking at it. You're literally going to repeat everything we just did, going around and placing each of the large petals directly in between the extra large petals that are below it. That hexagonal base helps get us started, and then once we're started, we use the petals below it as a guide to continue that pattern. Now I'm adding in my last large petal here, and once again, as I put that in, I'm gonna sort of tuck the one ending side underneath the beginning petal so it kind of closes the shape and makes it look um, very a very nice pattern sort of formation to the petals there. We're going to move on to the medium now. We're doing exactly the same thing. Aim to place the medium in between the large petals that are below it and just follow that as your um, guide to placing your petals. So place each medium directly in between the large that is below it. All right, so now I'm adding in my last medium petal here, tucking that final side just behind that um, beginning petal there. If you have to slightly lift up the beginning petal, that's fine too, and you can just press it back down with a little more glue. So here's what we have so far for this extra large succulent. And we're gonna be moving on to the small petals next. and the pattern will continue to repeat, placing those small petals directly between the medium petals that are below it. I'm just finishing up tucking in that final uh, small petal there. And then lastly, we will be working with our extra small petals. <clears throat> I'm using six of those as well. The petal count is all listed at the start um, of this video in case you missed that. So I'm just adding my glue and I'm placing the small extra small petals in between the small petals that are below it and we're gonna repeat this. And then once we close these um, extra small petals here, we're going to add in those um, center pieces that we started with that I showed you the shading on at the very beginning.
Okay, so now we're gonna move on to adding our four center pieces in that we started with when I showed you the shading. So what we're gonna do with these is two of the four, you're going to add that crease down the center of each petal point. So I'm just basically doing the same thing I did with the petals that we just put into the flower there. I'm just creasing right down the center slightly. You, have, you should have four center pieces cut out and you're gonna do this with two of the four. The next thing you want to do with these two is you want to tuck each of the petal points so that they are all kind of fanned the same direction and you want to give it a little bit of a twist at the base and then add your glue and add it into the flower and what this does is it just helps the petals sort of stand up when we do that little tuck and twist method there that I just showed you. As you're adding this in just pay attention to where the petal points are hitting. Try and have them hit in the same um, in between space. Um, as we were doing all along with the other layers of the flower. Repeat this again with the second center piece. Tuck all the petal points the same direction. Sort of twist and tuck. Add a little bit of glue to the bottom and place it in. Once again, look at where the petal points are falling as it opens up. And the last two pieces here, we're going to curl with a wood dowel. So I just take a wood dowel here and I press each of the petal points around it so that it adds a little bit of a curled edge. And the reason we don't crease these is because at this point the flower is basically going to close up into a tight bud center and the crease doesn't really look natural because in nature it would be, um, it would be more closed um, and the curl looks better for a closed shape in the very center. So for these last two um, center petals here we're just going to curl each point around and then we will add them in to the center. I'm going to repeat the same thing I did with the last one by tucking each petal the same direction and then sort of twisting the bottom. With this one you want to give it a, a nice tight twist so that the petals want to hold together and stand up. You don't want the center opening up and it looking like the flower isn't, you know, doesn't have a center to it or isn't closed. Um, so I'm adding in that first one and I'm just gently letting it open just a little bit, just enough that I can get that last center piece in. Again, tucking all the same direction with those petal points. This last one, you really want to twist it. You really want to like get that, that bottom pinched kind of tight there so that the petals don't want to open up too much when you put it in. Add some glue and then place it upright in the last remaining space at the center of your flower there. And there we go. That is one of our succulent styles done. That is how I would make it extra large. And we added in all of those beautiful layers there. You can see how pretty the distressed edges look. Just a touch of color on the edges that makes it look a little more realistic. And this is my um, large version. So if you wanted to go down a size, that's what that would look like. I just subtracted the extra large um, petals there and only used the large. Okay, so I'm actually going to show you the two other styles. They're made very much the same way, and I'm going to show you them in different sizes. So this one here is a large, so I'm only using petals starting with the large petal all the way down to the extra small and the center petals. Um, I'm distressing the edges here the same way I did with the first one. Again, totally optional. It can just add a little bit of a touch of color. And to shape this petal, I'm going to basically do the same thing. I'm going to cut about a one and a half to two inch slit at the bottom. I'm going to slightly crease it right at the bottom there. I'm going to add some glue on one side. And then I'm going to just slightly overlap. I would repeat that for all of my petals. So I have the large, the medium, the small, the extra small, and the center petals, just like the last one. We're just not using the extra large because we're going to create a large flower. You will also need to cut out the six-sided large base as well. These are all labeled inside of the templates that you downloaded. So just look for the um, name in reference to what size flower you're wanting to make. 
so I use the large six-sided base here. And I'm doing the same thing I did with the last flower. I am adding some glue to the back bottom side of each petal, and I'm placing each petal on one side of the six-sided base. I'm going to go around with all six petals until I've completed the large petals first, and then we move on to the medium. I designed my templates, most of my templates this way because I want people to have one main template to work with that they can easily downsize without having to have a whole new template for each size. Um, that can get a, a little bit um, confusing and a lot of you know formats and a lot of options to work with there as far as sizing goes. So I like to keep things simple and just show you how to downsize a flower using the same set of templates, you're just subtracting the extra large petal to create a large flower. And if you ever want to add more layers to a large, medium, small, whatever size you might be using, you can always add an additional layer if you want to make the flower more full, but the overall size will still be smaller because you won't have used that extra large petal or maybe the large petal and the extra large if you're making a medium. So I've added all of my large petals here. And I'm going to now add my medium petals the same way we did with the first flower. We're just going to place each one of those medium petals in between the large petals that are below it to create that alternating effect with the petals. I'm going to go around until I have completed all of my medium petals. Alright, so I'm just tucking in that last medium petal there. Again, try and tuck the final side right behind the um, first petal that we started for a more seamless look. And now I'm going to move on to my small petals. We're adding them in between those medium petals as we go around, exactly the same way as we did with the first flower and with the last layer. So as you can see, once you get this pattern down and this feel for how the flowers work, it's very um, systematic, it's very repetitive, um, and it's fairly easy. So I'm gonna go around here and I'm gonna finish adding these small petals, and then we're gonna move on to the um, extra small petals and the center, just like we did with the first flower. Okay, and finally I'm down to my extra small petals here, exactly the same thing. Go ahead and glue those in just as before. Make sure that you're layering them um, in between the small petals that we placed below them to create that alternating effect. And sometimes it can get a little tight in there, so if for any reason your flower comes together differently and you can't get six extra small petals in there, that's fine. If five comes together better for you, that, that's totally fine. Don't feel like you did it wrong or anything. That happens to me all the time too. So um, if five works out better for you, then that's totally fine. Okay, so now all we have left is the center pieces here. And I'm just creasing at the base of each of these petal points, very similar to what we did with the first flower. Um, I'm going to do that for two of them, and then for the remaining ones, I'm going to curl with a wood dowel. Now, for this flower, I only ended up putting three center pieces in because my flower came together rather tightly and the bud was kind of closing up rather quickly. So that fourth center piece didn't really fit. So I just, again, want to mention that if four of those center pieces don't come together for you like the first flower did, then that's okay, go ahead and just stick with the three, and that's what I'm doing here. So I creased those first ones, and then this last one here, 
I am curling with a wood dowel so that we get that closed tight center that we're looking for. Very similar again to what we did with the very first flower. Tucking them all the same direction, giving it a good tight twist at the bottom so that those petals are going to stay closed and stand up once we place that final layer into the center of our succulent there. So I'm finishing up this large version here. And um, as you can see, we were able to successfully downsize our flower just by subtracting the use of that extra large petal. If you wanted to create this in extra, uh, as an extra large, then you would just, of course, start with the extra large petals and follow the same pattern, just like we did with the first extra large flower. And there you go, there's our large version of this petal style. I'm also just gonna show you a small version here. So this is the round petal that comes with the templates. It's made very similar. Um, you're just going to cut that one and a half to two inch slit at the bottom of the petal there. Slightly overlap with your glue. I am making a small version here, so I am starting with the small petal, and then I'll be using the small, the extra small, and the center petals. I'll also be using the small base as shown here. So whatever size flower you want to start with, that's the size petal you want to start with. So I'm starting with my small petal here because I want to make a small flower. And I'm just going around um, the six-sided base, placing one petal per side. Okay, so I'm just going to add in my extra small petals exactly the same way as we did with the last flower examples. Gluing each of the extra small in between the small petal that is below it. And like I said, there are three different style petals that come with these succulent templates. They're all made very similar. You can downsize all of them. I've shown you three different examples here and you can see that they can all be made successfully in different sizes. So that's the beauty of these templates and I just try to make them very versatile. Okay, so I have those small and extra small petals in and I'm gonna use four of the center petals here. Um, and I'm gonna tuck them all in the same direction just like I did in the last two examples. I've curled these here with a wood dowel. I've not creased these or anything. I've curled them because the petal is kind of rounded. Um, so I decided just to curl with the wood dowel like I showed you in the last two examples. I'm continuing with my next centerpiece here. I'm tucking them all the same direction, all the petal points, a little twist at the base, and then adding that in. Try and pay attention to the way the flower points are falling so that they're alternating to the layer that you added below it. Okay, so I'm just adding in my last two centers here. Four, uh, four center pieces came together well for this small flower, so um, that's what I'm gonna use. If your center came together more closed and tight than mine did, um, then you may only end up with three, and again, that's totally fine. Um, the centers might vary a little bit based on your personal style, so I always recommend three or up to four. Um, <clears throat> so I'm adding in this very last fourth center piece here for this round succulent. And so now you have seen how to make a full size extra large, you've seen how to downsize to a large, and this is also a small example. You can do the same thing with a medium flower and make these in all different sizes. So you can see that one, that one there is an extra small, and then we have a large, we have the extra large there, and another large that we made, and then the extra large right there as well. So there's lots of different variations, and they're very versatile, easy to use. Templates that can allow you to downsize multiple sizes 
and make some really gorgeous succulents. I hope you guys liked this video tutorial. Uh, I'd love to see your creations, so feel free to tag me in them, Abby Kirsten Collections, and I'll see you guys next time.